everybody, and welcome back to this week's Stoke. We are so close to the season, and that's why I am packing us in with interviews as we are getting close to Solden in just a couple of days. And so for that, I'm so excited to bring in a couple more interviews. And today I'm bringing back Alice Robinson, who is awesome to be able to come on with us last season and talk to us about really her start to skiing and where she is now. But today we're going to kind of break it down a little bit and talk a little bit more about the technical side of skiing. It's not every day that you get to talk to somebody who really knows how to create a powerful and beautiful smooth arc. So I'm super excited to have Alice back today. Alice, thanks again for taking the time. I know that you're in Europe right now getting ready for the races. So it's super fun to be able to have this chat today and get through everything that we want to talk about. Yeah, no worries. Happy to be back. Thanks, Parker. <laughs> so with that in mind, I think it'll be important to talk a little bit about your new setup, right? So we're moving into a new season. You have a new setup and that normally means a fresh start. So what are you thinking as you've kind of moved into this new ski setup, which Solomon is where we're at right now? Um, mm -hmm. How is that kind of taking your preparation to the races in a couple of weeks? Yeah, no, it's been um, really exciting and super cool. I mean, this is the first for me in my career, obviously, I'm still young. So, you know, a lot of athletes stay on the same equipment their whole career. But for me, you know, switching, it's been super exciting. And it was something I think I really needed um after last year you know just a good change up and everything and it's been going really well um I've been you know super impressed with the support that I've got from Solomon and they're real intrigued to get better and to find you know the best setup for me and um you know they're really curious as to what I want to change and what I feel and are super enthusiastic about making those changes changes and you know making pro like progress with the skis and the setup so that's really cool. You get to be involved in this like technical aspect as you're preparing. So you're working with the ski company to create that ideal setup. And so that's kind of a sweet thing that is very probably pretty unique in the sense that you're working with this brand. But does that also go into your preparation for race day? Or do you feel like at this point already everything's set and you're good to go? Um, I think we're still, you know, ironing out a few things. I guess like this summer um, was a big, big process and, you know, figuring out what works for me and um, the setup that I need and what I need um, in terms of my setup and what kind of skis I need, what kind of boot setup I need. So it was quite a lot of work over the summer um, going back and forth with the company and my service guy, obviously being kind of the middle man, you know, talking out about what we think could be different in the skis or what we think could be different in the boots. Um, and it's been yeah, super impressive with Solomon, like how quickly they've been able to change equipment and produce new skis. And um, they're so eager to make changes, which has been really cool. Yeah, that's really neat. And so now we get to talk about really your preparation for the race. So what do you do now when we're pretty close to the start gate? Do you just start to like mentally prepare? Do you kind of keep everything the same? Do you change your daily routine? What do you kind of do as you're getting ready for the first start? Um, yeah, well, I guess Solden's always a little bit like tricky because it's so early, like compared to the rest of the races, you know, like after this, I've got like five weeks until my next race. So um, it's kind of an interesting one. And I guess it's probably more high intentions because you know it's the start of the season and everyone wants to know how where they're at and I mean for me this is kind of just like a I guess a bit of a rebuild race for me in terms of GS because I struggled a bit with my GS last year so um I'm just going to kind of take it you know just take it pretty chill I don't want to like work myself up over it too much and in terms of preparation I guess we're just kind of ironing out the last things I guess on hill um we're training sold in here and then we're going to Chanel style, which is slightly steeper to kind of emulate the hill um, of Solden for a couple of days. And then coming back here for the last few days. So I guess mentally, I'm just, you know, trying to um, simple things out a bit, like simplize stuff, I suppose, and not trying to think about, you know, the equipment too much or my technique too much, just kind of make it a bit more instinctual and just trying to run through the motions a bit, I suppose. Um, and it was good that I got to do a few kind of races at home in New Zealand this year. So I kind of got that like race prep run through, which is what I needed, I think. Um, which is good so yeah that's kind of the only difference and I'm just trying to you know stay um I guess off or stay offline a little bit more <laughs> try not to like go online too much and look at Instagram or social media too much just trying to clear my head and just keep really focused no I love that and I think the key piece of what you said there is like keeping it simple and talking yeah. about just having that technique ingrained in your muscle memory and what you've practiced and what you've been doing yeah. day to day and I think that's really cool too, as we kind of progress into where I want to take the rest of this interview, which is talking about the technical aspect of skiing. And that's because we've already been able to chat more about you in the past. And so I think really just having this opportunity to dive into what you think about in a turn is just going to be super crucial for everybody who's learning right now and getting ready 
to get into the season and kind of maybe a little bit more behind in terms of the progression of racing in sense that they're kind of getting on snow and getting ready to go technically skiing before they start racing a little bit later in the fall. But so let's talk a little bit about the turn. So for you, right, Alice, you've always had a really cool, powerful, smooth arc, right? Mm -hmm. That's always been something that I've seen in your skiing. That's like very, very unique and very cool and something that I think is going to take off. So I want you to talk a little bit about that turn and kind of like what the key pieces are for you when you're thinking about going through and making that, that arc. Yeah, I suppose for me, I guess, um, I've always, yeah, tried my kind of goals, I guess, when I'm skiing has always been to um, do a clean arc, whether that means, you know, you need to be on a slightly higher line. I guess this is like technical and then it kind of plays into tactical as well. But I think, you know, having that clean arc, I think is the fastest, but, you know, sometimes, um, if you mistime it or you kind of do it wrong. I think for me, a problem that I've found is um, if I don't arc, but I'm on the same line as I'm going to arc and I slide a little bit, then it's like really slow, which um, has happened to me a little bit in the past in like some races where it's, you know, and then it kind of ruins my whole um, mojo or timing, I suppose, of the whole course. And then um, that's a bit of an issue, but I think ideally I want to try and like arc every turn. And I think the most important things for arcing is I guess your initiation, like knees, it has to start from the ground up. Um, you know you press on the front of the boot drop your knees ankles knees drop and then a bit of hip drop if you need it and I think that's most important and also and that's kind of like the legs and I guess you kind of go in drop the knees and the skis will come around just because the side cut of the skis Um, and then upper body I think is just being stacked square being over the outside ski not leaning inside Um, and those are literally the kind of basic cues for me that I think about when I'm trying to arc doesn't really get any different from that No. And again, this is that simplicity, right? And I think what's really cool about it is you talk about moving from the ground up, right? Having the ankles and knees, being able to drive that ski and move that through the turn and then keeping that balance with the stacked upper body position. But it's cool too. Like you're not talking about moving all over with all these extra added pieces. Like it's a very simple, very calm (laughs) piece. I mean, yeah. I guess for me, I think, you know, different athletes have different things. I mean, I'm not sure, I can't speak for all athletes, but I guess for me, like things my coaches tell me is the same stuff I hear, like U14 kids being told by their coach, you know, like it doesn't, it's not super complicated. I don't think, I guess it's just kind of finding a way to just do those steps better and better. And that's kind of the difference. No, cool. And then do you think of any drills? And I think that this is kind of neat too, based on what you just said, that it's kind of the same stuff that a U14 coach is teaching their kids too. And so with that in mind, if I were a little U14 and I'm listening to Alice talk about how to arc a perfect turn, what are some awesome drills or ways and cues other than just those technical aspects of driving the knees and ankles and keeping your body stacked? Is there a drill that you like to use? Is there like a mental cue like, oh, keep my body facing here, et cetera? Yeah, I think um, something I quite liked, I mean, this sounds a little bit counterproductive, but um, I actually quite like doing skidded turns. <laughs> yeah. Just because I think it gets your upper body in a good position or your whole body. Like you've, because yeah. you can't make a really clean arc if your body's not in the right position. So I think slowing it all down and going back to basics and doing just a really good skidded turn where your upper body is in the perfect, perfect position, you're super level you've got your knees and ankles, you're pushing on the front of your boots and you're basically just going through the whole motion, but just slowing it down so you can kind of think about it a bit more. So I do those every day before training. Um, another one I think is good as edge sets. Yep. Because it gets that feeling of dropping the knees and ankles in. Um, so I do those most mornings. And then another one I quite like is, um, I don't really know if these, if this is the right name for them, but I call them, <laughs> I call them javelin turns. Yep. So it's basically when you're like in a turn and you're crossing your inside ski over your outside ski. And that gets that because a big thing that I work on is my levelness, like not being inside. So that's one I do use a lot. Um, so I cross my inside ski over my outside ski and that gets me super balanced. And then in terms of arcing, I mean, I guess because I'm so used to arcing, I'm not sure if there's like a drill I do now to like get me to arc. But um, when I was a kid, I remember one of our coaches used to make us do was we started like on one side of the hill and we'd pretty much, it would be like a competition who could traverse up the highest. The J turn. The J turn. <laughs> yeah. I remember doing those. And I think I actually, yeah, I think that makes sense. Like, you know, doing that. And no. then I think another one that's really good is starting from one side of the hill. You're on your, basically your uphill ski and you have to turn clean arc just on that ski. And you can't do it unless you're pushing really hard in the front of the boot. 
and you're really level because you're on one ski and then you have to arc it and you, you kind of can tell during that um, movement if your body's in the right position you can arc it and that's a good feeling I think knowing where you need to be to do it no those I think are sweet drills and I think funny enough like you even describing like a j-turn so yeah it mm. may have not been called the j-turn when you were growing up but yeah it is a drill that we see a lot of people doing on the hill and like watch out mm. for the little kids that are just trying to yeah. get up as high as possible yeah exactly <laughs> but it is it's a good cue and I think that that's really helpful just to think about things that everyday skiers can go and try and focus on to be able yeah. to have that arc and that connection with the snow and the skis and so now you talked a little bit about what you do every day right you warm up and I think that that leads to a routine so are you somebody that feels like you have a daily routine that you use to kind of get yourself ready for training and does that change for race day or do you kind of keep that going through all the time um yeah I would say <clears throat> I mean I'm probably not the most routine person ever I mean I try you know I'm, I'm like always trying to do stuff I mean when I'm training I try and just be really focused like in the mornings I get up um go have breakfast then I go and like warm up like go on the bike then do some like warm up in my room because um I guess it's quite good now that I'm like at camp it feels like quite easy to kind of get like a really good routine um you know get up have breakfast do my like pre pre hill warm up, um, get ready, go. Starting to leave my new <laughs> my new thing that I think is actually working quite well for me is I'm leaving my phone in the hotel room. So I'm quite liking that. So I just don't have like any distractions when I'm up there. I'm just fully focused. Get up there, um, yeah. Do my on snow warm up and then kind of go through. I'm doing like around six runs at the moment and then kind of just going through those cues in my head um, each day and just trying to figure it out. And yeah, that's kind of how it works for me. And then after training, come back, um, eat lunch, normally have a nap, <laughs> have a nap or watch some TV or something. And then I've got normally a dry land session, whether that's recovery, like intervals, um, lifting, whatever. And then normally I have some more kind of like admin stuff to do in the afternoon and then watch video, have dinner and then read a book and go to bed pretty much. So, and then it happens again and again and again and again. And again. Um, and for race day, I suppose, I try and be like that kind of next level of organized just so I don't really have anything to worry about. Like, you know, I pack my bag and up four, which I never do for training. <laughs> um, you know, pack my finished bag, um, you know, go through like all my recovery stuff more than I would for training. Um, I guess I like try and lay out what I'm going to wear the night before just so I'm like kind of in my head, you know, I'm trying to get like focused, I suppose. I'm like, okay, this is what you're doing tomorrow um take my bag and then in the mornings this is kind of the same drill as training but normally just a bit earlier with a bit more angst I suppose totally and do you find yourself to be one of those like cool calm collected race day people do you find yourself to be like a little bit nervous and you figure out how to like calm those nerves how are you when it comes to like okay go time <laughs> um I think you know I've experienced both I think it depends on how I'm feeling at the time like I've had some race days where I've been super relaxed and not really that you know not stressed at all and just feel super confident and calm but I've definitely had other days maybe where I'm not feeling as confident um in myself or the prep has been very good or you know I haven't had a very good run in races where I'm like super nervous and just a bit stressed the whole time so I guess it's kind of trying to figure out the and I'm still trying to figure out like the process that I have to go through to figure out um how I get to that like optimal state of mind I suppose on race day and normally it's to do with you know confidence like feeling like you've had good prep I mean last year I was like struggling a lot with sleep which was something like really new to me because normally I've been like a rock sleeping like having to wake like no one could wake me or anything and then last year I was having super super bad sleeps like before races so that was kind of throwing me off a little bit so I'm trying to like you know get back into that really good sleep routine and stuff like that no super important and yeah interesting and crazy how that can affect so many things right a good night of mm -hmm. sleep and that confidence, yeah. that ability to wake up and feel rested and refreshed mm. and like ready to go. I, I totally understand that. So mm. wishing your sleep the best of luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I suppose ski race is an interesting one because, you know, you're actually only racing for like whatever, like two minutes of the day, right. but it's a super long day. You know, you're waking up at like around six and you're normally not getting back till around like four on a GS race day. So it's a super long day, even though you're only racing like two minutes of the whole day. No, it's an interesting like sport mentality too, because you think about people who are like running marathons and they're running mm -hmm. all day long and then ski racing being that anaerobic activity where you're like, okay, mm -hmm. I've prepped all year for my one minute. <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's pretty brutal. <laughs> that margin for error is pretty low. 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that that's why we talk about that technique being ingrained in the muscle memory and yeah, having that mental ability to kind of calm yourself and remember that you've put in the preparation, you've put in the time, you've got your bag packed, your clothes are out, right? Like you get ready to go and you just wake up in that morning and you're like, okay, here we go. This is what I'm ready yeah. to do. And let's go seize the day jokes. Yeah. But it is it is true. Um, so Alice, I think really we were able to talk about a ton of crucial stuff as we're really moving into the start of the season and just that like technical time that you are able to really build and kind of create that speed so that when it is time to race, it's there, it's in that muscle memory, you're ready to go. And I think that that's such an important piece for people to really take, um, from this interview and just take in general. So Mm. I can't thank you enough for your time. It's always super fun to chat with you and I'm excited to follow you this season and get everything going. And I think we just wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, totally.